Did you hear the news? You might want to sit down. Another princess is missing. Yeah, again. I can't remember if this one was cursed as a baby, stolen, or just ran away from home. But the point is, she's hot. And that's great news because the king said that the guy that saves her gets to marry her. And if you marry royalty, you become royalty. Easy street, brother. And if you look anything like me, Easy Street is an address you're not familiar with. Sign me up, right? Now, there is a catch. Turns out she's guarded by a dragon. A magical dragon that can change its shape. It's been seen as a clown, a noseless wizard, even someone with asthma. But most of the time, it takes the form of an ugly old witch. This hag is so hideous, you have to be stoned just to look at her. Why'd she do it? Well, she's gross. I mean, who knows why ugly people do what they do? I feel like you're focusing on the wrong thing. The point is, there's a beautiful, polite, sweet, respectful maiden being held captive by a creature that is the opposite of all those things, which makes it evil. You know the rules. If you fight evil, you're labeled as good. And we all want to be good, right? Why doesn't the king save her? Well, he's already good. It's our job to please him. You know what, that's a good question. There's definitely more to this story than meets the eye. I mean, how do we know the witch is a villain? No one has ever woken up and said, today I'm going to be evil. Even serial killers think their actions are justified, that they are somehow bringing balance to the equation. We're all heroes in our own story, and a villain in someone else's. Keep this in mind if you're an aspiring writer. The best antagonists don't think they're the antagonists. You see, the hero and the villain are two sides of the same coin. The same is true of the princess and the creature that guards her. Next time you watch or read a story, ask yourself why the villain is the villain. Once you get through all the fluff, there's only one answer. They disrupted the status quo. The same is true in real life. Anyone that buckles the system is demonized. They have to be. It's the only way to keep the system running smoothly. When someone has the audacity to think for themselves, it's as offensive as stealing the king's daughter. Order can't be restored until she's back. And whoever does so is a hero. But this is a lie. Being a cog that keeps the machine running is the opposite of a hero. Every scientific or religious breakthrough we have ever had has come because someone went against the status quo. The impotent cries of the ordinary world are that you should trust the experts because the science is settled. That you can't write a holy book because the world's religions have already been established. How does a hero respond? The same way the Wright brothers did when they were told about the law of gravity. Hold my beer. This brings us back to the princess. You want to know why she's considered good? It's not because she's the king's daughter. It's because she's disempowered. You see, we've all been programmed to associate victimhood with goodness. Decades of propaganda have trained us to think we are responsible for how other people feel, that good and nice are the same thing. This lie is not only extremely harmful psychologically, but also ruins story, an example being the latest Star Wars films. The truest thing you will ever hear is that you are the source of every feeling you will ever feel. Anyone who wants you to identify as a victim based on something in your past doesn't care about you. They want you disempowered. Why? Because disempowered people are easier to manipulate. We instinctively know this. Every time someone sneezes, we say bless you. The word bless comes from the Hebrew word baraka, which means to be empowered. The reason the old hag is vilified is because she refuses to be a victim. She's not afraid to openly state and pursue her desires. And this makes us uncomfortable. Her ugliness and danger are directly proportional to how offensive her behavior is. It's why the princess is beautiful. She's not real. She represents our social self, the part of us we present to the system. The part of us that's a mask. This is why saving her doesn't empower the hero. Only a weak protagonist chooses a partner that won't rock the boat. 
Only the disempowered fear those who speak from the heart. Perhaps this is best expressed in the King Arthur tale that dared to answer the question that keeps helpless romantics up on the eve of every Valentine's Day. What do women want? One day, Arthur was out on a hunt when a knight appeared and challenged him to a duel. Being unarmed, the king noted his disadvantage. The knight allowed Arthur to leave as long as he returns in one year's time and answers the question of what women want. Failure to answer correctly will result in Arthur losing his head. So the king recruits his nephew, and together the two of them spend the year trying to find the answer. On his travels, the king comes across an ugly hag who promises to give him the answer as long as she can marry his nephew. Hearing the news, the nephew selflessly agrees, and the hideous hag tells Arthur that all women desire sovereignty. Arthur brings the answer to the knight, saving his noggin, and returns home to prepare for the wedding. The king's nephew keeps his word, and on his wedding night is amazed to discover his new bride has transformed into a beautiful woman. She explains that she was under a spell, and that now her beauty has been restored, but only for half the day. She allows the nephew to choose if he would have her beauty visible during the day so that others may see, or only at night for him alone. He responds that the choice should be hers. This answer lifts the curse for good, and she remains beautiful permanently. In her commentary on the story, psychologist Polly Young Eisendrath reminds us that when women want to be desired, they unintentionally enforce the belief that a demanding woman is something to be feared and subdued. When we cloak our desires in niceties, in seductions, we protect ourselves from being known directly and imply that others must always be nice to us. This kind of eggshell quality of female desire suggests our needs must be hidden, that they are dangerous. This truth is also discovered by the male hero in the story of the devil's sooty brother, which shows a filthy soldier fearlessly declaring his desires before a king, but only after visiting hell. Sovereignty is a dirty word for those stuck in the ordinary world. This is true of anyone that's traded freedom for safety. Nietzsche told us that he who cannot obey himself will be commanded. He also said all truths are bloody truths. Truth is always offensive. There's no salvation to be found in the flawless beauty calling from the tower. That's reserved for the bloody truth that guards her. Union with her requires someone equally as dangerous. Aslan was never a tame lion, but he was always good. There's only one story. There's only one person in that story, and that person is you. <laughs>